Hey everyone, I'm Xunani. Welcome to my new video. Today it's a very special video because we celebrate the thousand subscribers and I'm so happy. Thank you so much for your support. To celebrate this, I will answer all your questions and create a piece of art only for you. So I'm very excited and happy. Let's do this! I plan to create a mixed media artwork with hand lettering in the middle. The thing what happened is my cam stopped recording after the background and I recognized it very late before the outlines. But however I wanted to share this first piece with you because you are awesome. After this piece was ready, I started another one, which I luckily recorded completely. The second piece is also with type and with a little painted world around. In this case with watercolors, watercolor pencils and normal colored pencils. I chose the message Together We Are Strong because I'm so happy that you're all here with me and help my channel grow. Watch my videos, chat with me in the comments. This community is such a wonderful thing. I'm so thankful to have you all here on my side. Let's be creative together, my friends. And now, enjoy watching the painting process of both artworks while I answer all your questions. The first question is, when did you begin drawing? I have drawn my whole life. It was already my favorite thing to do when I was very small and it never stopped. My mom collected all my first drawings and my first drawn story when I was three or four. Perhaps I should show you my kids drawings someday. What began your interest in the fantastical mixed with nature? I always liked fantasy, elves, dwarves, little gnomes, and I grew up with a family which has this connection to nature. My grandpa had his big garden and we always were there to help. We grew a lot of our own food there and had fruit trees and so on. Directly beside our garden was the forest. We played there all the time. For holidays we always drove to the mountains and the forests and my mom told me all the names of the trees, plants, mushrooms, the birds and everything we saw there. And this love to nature got never lost. Later when I was a young adult I created decorations for psychedelic parties and they also were always nature inspired. I crafted big flowers and leaves and fairies and painted big pictures with florists and colors also themed about growing nature and our place on this earth as a human. I painted a lot of different stuff along these many years, but nature was always a theme combined with other different things, things which came to my interest, like ancient cultures or surrealism and so on. Does anyone else in your family paint or draw? This is the next question. My great-grand-uncle was an artist and my grandpa always illustrated his photo albums with flowers and plants and birds and such things. He also had the flow. Next question. The creatures, things you paint, some creatures you see in the pattern or something in your imagination that you wanted to put down. Both. Sometimes I have a complete plan, make a sketch and paint it then. And sometimes I just want to have fun and get inspiration in the first color layer and paint what I see. 
or just start to draw a random tree or a creature and then everything else grows around almost from alone. Sometimes I combine both. I have an idea, but I don't know exactly yet what I will draw or what it will be in the end and start with this idea in my head, but in my flow it freely grows. I paint what I feel and what I see there. I'm a very intuitive painter. Have you ever been at Schwarzwald? If yes, how is it? I was once in the Schwarzwald, but only to drive through to go to a concert. We stopped at a waterfall, it was beautiful there. All these trees, this amazing forest, so wild and magical. I definitely want to go there again someday. What is your favorite kind of food and what don't you like? Oh, this is a difficult question. To choose out of so many tasty foods I like. Hmm. I, I really like mushrooms. Mushrooms in all different kinds. My favorites are oyster mushrooms. The best is to roast them with garlic and lemon zest in the pan. Perhaps a bit of cream and perhaps a bit of ginger. Fresh ginger. And this with rice. It's so yummy. And of course chocolate. Chocolate in any form. As an ice cream, as a cake or simply chocolate. Chocolate is so good. Do you have some advices for a beginner artist that quickly wants to get better at painting or drawing? Yeah, my first advice would be have fun and no pressure. As I was a beginner... I always compared my art to others. Then I felt bad because I wanted to be as good. That is a lot of pressure. You can't compare yourself to somebody who draws every day for years. This person has a lot of practice and already found their own style or something like that. When you are a beginner, you can get inspiration from the others, but then do your own thing. Feel free, have fun, follow your heart. Perhaps buy a sketchbook, which is only for your eyes, and practice in here. Feel free to flow in there, and then draw a lot. Perhaps you copy something, what style you really like, to learn how the artist creates lights and shadows, only for you and your sketchbook. This is a good way to learn. It's totally okay to copy if you just do it for you to practice. Everybody did that. I did that too. But if you want to share it then on Instagram, for example, credit the artist with inspired by and the artist's name. Use references and perhaps experiment with different medias if you like that you can find out what you are enjoying most. So this is what I would recommend. No pressure and just have fun and draw a lot. What's your goal with your art career? Hmm, my, my dream and goal is to be able to live from my art. It would be so nice to have different sources of income like YouTube of course. Now we reached the thousand subscribers, but I don't have enough watch time to monetary size yet. You can help me if you want and watch all my videos. <laughs> and then there will be a bit of income. I can tell you how much it is when I get my first money from YouTube, if you like. I'm really curious how much it will be. And then I want to open a little shop where I can sell art prints, originals and all kinds of stuff. I have to do this very soon. And beside the internet, um, I'm joining exhibitions here and there. This is what I also want to keep so people can buy my artworks, get to know my name or can book me for individualized paintings and commissions. There are a few other things in my head. I just need a bit more time to work on all this. Like the shop, for example. 
The only thing I want to do is to make my art, share it with others and have the possibility to earn money with it. This is my goal. This is my dream. Are there things you didn't try yet and want to try? Alcohol markers? I think I want to try them more than I have done it yet. I think uh, there are a lot of possibilities to work with them also in mixed media. I have none. Perhaps it would be nice to work with them. And I want to go bigger with my creatures, with acrylics on canvas or What I really would love to do is painting a mural on a big wall. This would be amazing. Next question. How much time do you spend creating art on an average day? Do you follow a routine? I try to draw and paint every day. This can be to create a whole piece of art like this for my YouTube videos. This can also be a little sketch outside in my sketchbook or sketching things I want to practice like faces or hands. Or I start a spread in my bigger sketchbook and go on the spread the whole week to create a few little art pieces on it. Sometimes I manage more to do, sometimes it's less than I want. Drawing and painting makes me happy and it belongs to me on every day. I am sad if I haven't time to draw on a day. This also can happen. I try to integrate it in my day, even if my time is tight. You have this unique style with these forms and creatures. How has your style developed over time? Did you have other faces, for example, very realistic portraits? First, thank you so much. I always had different faces on my way. I think it will go further. This is not the end. I will still develop over time. This is a difficult question. I have to say, I always try to stay in practice with realistic drawing. That means faces, nature studies, like insects, plants, all the things which interests me. I want to draw and On the other hand, I want to be free and draw something which only comes out of my own imagination. Or I combined both in the past. And it was always like that. I went through very psychedelic phases with my art or, surreal or surrealism, but I always drew portraits here and there. Then I was hooked from ancient cultures and painted a lot of it what really inspired me to this time. But in my sketchbook, I always created creatures or drew a flower. Then I love to draw and paint insects, realistic and also abstract and surrealistic. And now I'm here. I really have to show you my pictures of the last years, how I develop over time. Please write in the comments if you would like to watch a video like this. But I never had a phase where I only drew realistic things like portraits, animals or stuff like that. I always have to flow a bit, you know. Do you have a job? How did you start doing art and how was your earlier work different to your current style? The second Half of the question I already answered with the question before, I think. Perhaps uh, what I could say is that my art became more positive in the last year. It was very dark and morbid before, sometimes. Uh, the first part of the question, do I have a job? Yes, to be an artist is my job. Before Kids and COVID, I was an independent designer and illustrator. I worked for book publishers, companies, private persons, musicians. But then I became mom and it was hard to work beside this. Then directly COVID-19 hit us all and it was impossible to work normal with two kids, which couldn't go to kindergarten because it was closed. 
Then I started to paint and paint and paint it a lot and I realized this is what I want to do. I made an exhibition and was part of an art project here and started my YouTube channel and since then I know that this is what I want to do and I try to build up my own little business. I'm on my way. Do you have any advice for getting over fear of a blank page or fear of making bad art? What I said before, no pressure. Everything what you create is good. Every little drawing is important for your way as an artist. It doesn't matter if it's very good in the end or if you think it was not so successful. You will learn out of all your drawings. I also don't like to paint on a white page and what I'm doing is I create a colorful background and work on top of it. This helps a lot. Also, if you are art blocked somehow or don't know what to draw right now. Also, when I just want to sketch on white paper, the key is just doing it. Silent your brain, turn on music you love or meet with others to draw together. Have fun, just start. When you have the first strokes on the paper, it's easier to continue. Trust in yourself and in the process. Often it has to grow on the paper. Allow yourself to do mistakes. This is the best way to learn. You are making your art for you in the first place, not for all the others on social media. Draw what makes you happy. Pressure is poison to your art and your progress. And there is the last question, which I often get. Why are your videos in English? Why not in German? Because you are German, right? Yes, I'm from Flensburg in the very north of Germany on the border to Denmark. As I started with YouTube, I decided to make an English channel because of a few things. We have family and friends in the US. My husband lived in Montana for years as he was a kid and our children grow up bilingual. I speak with them German, my husband English. Half of the family speaks English with their kids. We have Danish friends and friends from all over the world. I wanted that everybody we know can watch and understand my videos. I also wanted a wide range that people all over the world can watch my videos. I know not in every country you learn English in school, but English is the language which most of the people can understand. So this is the reason why my videos are in English. I'm sorry that my English is not perfect. Sometimes it's hard for me to find the right words, but I think I improved a lot in the last year and slightly it feels comfortable to talk in English in front of the camera. So that was it. Thank you so much for all your questions. It was so much fun to answer them. And thank you so much for hanging around with me for this video. I hope you enjoyed listening and watching me painting. Let's have a closer look at the finished pieces together and have an awesome day. See you next time. Yours Ksunani. Thank you.